Flory. I am the marketing coordinator here at Octria. My goal is to help fundraising groups make the most out of their auction fundraiser. And this is a part of this webinar is part of a series. We have webinars going all the way through December and we're always looking for new topics. So if there's something that you wanna hear, drop me a line, drop me an email. We're on Facebook, Twitter, um, and, and give us some advice and feedback. We're always looking to grow and get better and stronger and faster. So I'll go ahead and get started and advance the slides to our agenda here. This is what we're hoping to cover. Um, the topics will be thinking about how to understand the auction audience, how to prepare the procurement letter, who and when to ask for donations, secrets to online auction requests, options for no risk items, and we've got Sierra here to help us with those. And then of course, we'll open it up to questions and answers. So um, just a quick overview of Octria. Um, if you didn't realize, Octria was formed, founded in 2011, originally as charity auction organizer. If you've been around with us since that time, you'll recognize that name. And we changed our name and logo in 2016 to Octria. Like many awesome tools out there, this program was designed out of need. Honestly, we too were tired of bid sheets that were unorganized on paper and long cumbersome check-ins and check-outs. There had to be a better way. So our founder brilliantly developed Octria from the ground up, taking into account the entire auction process from the first donation to the last receipt and all the bidding in between. It sounds so cliche, but it's so true. Um, for some background, Octria has helped groups fundraise over a hundred million dollars. And actually that number is really low. I need to change this slide. Um, 21,000, over 21,000 auctions have come through, over 1.6 million bidders and over 1.4 million auction items. So we've got a little bit of experience that we'd like to share with you. But every day is still new to us and we are always appreciative of feedback on everything from the product to the content, like something here tonight. Um, through the years, feedback has helped guide us in adding and improving new features such as our Octria mobile app, which is now being used for a lot of groups for their fall fundraising activities. So if you want any information on that, it's on our user guide um, and we have some webinars coming up to discuss those too. So let's talk about finding auction items, but let's back up for a second here. I really want to talk about the auction audience. When you're starting the procurement process, try to really understand and really figure out what the auction audience will bid on. What's going to make them open their wallets? And don't be afraid to be creative. So you want to define your audience, kind of get an idea. What does your customer currently spend money on? Are they adults only? Are they families? Are they budget conscious? And if necessary, do a quick survey. Ask your stakeholders, your board, your frequent volunteers, your supporters. Um, ask anybody around you, what will you bid on? And that'll help you kind of focus your energies. Look at your historical data. What have they spent money on in the past? What has worked as well as what hasn't worked in any of your fundraising efforts? It doesn't necessarily have to be an auction. Are national products and services desirable or do you think they perform more, pref prefer more localized pieces? Sports, do they want to be spectators or participants? Will they pay for unique experiences and exotic vacations? Will they spend money on large ticket items like big sporting events? Do they like local treasures? And what's special in, back in your backyard? I have an article that I'm going to show you about that. And what can you bring that is different and unique? Priceless items and keepsake items are fun too. And we'll dive into those. I have a couple examples. So the number one key to getting the auction right is to be prepared and be organized. Be prepared by timing requests both internally and externally. Some requests need weeks or months and some even longer. Being organized helps the entire event run smoothly from the first request and donation through the bidding and wrap up. You want to make sure you create an online presence as soon as you have a firm date for the auction fundraiser. This gives you an opportunity to refer people online to the upcoming event so that it can kind of have a home and live online. 
This should include important information. And in the beginning stage, you definitely want to put a save the date up there. Post a donation request plea on the website. If you're using Octria, you can go ahead and use um, your website early um, and include the donation request letter and make it available for download in any opportunity that you communicate with, whether it's emails or, or um, on your, your own website. In planning, you wanna map out all the important dates, calendar everything out in the beginning. Start with an end date of when you want to launch the auction catalog and calendar out backwards and make your deadlines. Be sure to give yourself plenty of time to price, photograph, and catalog everything, and then add in an extra day, because that's just always how it goes. And if, by the way, something comes in after the deadline, don't decline it. Thank the donor, but be honest that it may not make it to a printed catalog, but you would be more than happy to accept the donation and say thank you. Be sure to keep very accurate records on donor requests, as well as who is soliciting which donor and key follow-up dates, especially if you have a bunch of people that are helping with procurement. Figure out ahead of time the storage situation. It's best to have a single person and location to store donated items um, in a secure location. Be prepared to say no thank you to items that will clutter the auction. For instance, home good sellers and home demos aren't really a good fit for your auction. And it's amazing. Once you put that donation letter up, how many of those kind of come out of the woodworks? And a quick note here about volunteers. If you're organized, it makes it easier to ask for specific volunteer help. Somebody says, yeah, I'd be happy to volunteer and you've already split out the list. You're like, hey, go hit this neighborhood or go hit this type of um, restaurants. Um, the more organized you are and the more specific that you can ask for volunteer help, the better. And the volunteers are willing to help if their time is well spent. Chances are they'll come back and help again because they really feel like they're making a difference. So let's talk about procurement letter basics. You always want to answer the question, what does the donor get out of it? An effective procurement letter will be on letterhead to ensure a professional look. Be friendly, state the purpose of the fundraiser. A letter to help the cause, such as enrich the students, fight the disease, feed the hungry. Um, looks like somebody's here from a children's nonprofit, I'm not, not sure exactly what. Um, you know, what are you doing for the children? What are you doing for the historical museum? How are you bringing in, um, you know, newer items or restoring things, exact. how is that really going to help the cause? And then again, repeat, what does the donor get out of it? Besides helping the cause generate funds, do they get their business name in an auction catalog or post it at the event? Will it be online with a click through? When you use Octria, you post the donor's information on the, on the website and it clicks through. That's an amazing marketing opportunity. So take advantage of that and be specific when you share that information with your potential donors. Speaking of specificity, tell them exactly how and when to donate, what type of donations you're looking for and what date you need the donations by. Like I said, a cutoff date is vital to ensure donated items come in with lead time to then be cataloged, priced, and marketed. Make sure you include all key information on the letter, email, website, contact names. You can do it in a bulleted list, it's fine. Provide links to your online website for further information. If you have a tax status and a tax ID that's relevant, and those are key factors, for the donor, then go ahead and include those on the page. Our best tip is add a real name and a phone number. So many times I see procurement letters and it just says, Suzy Q Charity. Put a real name, put a real phone number. It gives it a much more personal touch and it makes it much more of a valid request. Be sure to include a call to action. You're also a marketer here, so pardon your marketing hat. 
Ask for donations now or tomorrow or the next day, whatever your date is, but put a call to action in there and be specific about the date, how you will pick up the items, how they need to be delivered. Make it easy for the donor. And it bears repeating, be nice, don't assume that everybody cares about the cause you're promoting. Some businesses only donate to a preferred area of interest or geography. So if they decline to donate, simply thank them for their time and move on. Let's talk about who and when to ask for donations. The very best time to ask for a donation in person is when you are transacting business with a customer. Are you eating lunch out? Ask for a donation while you're seated. Getting coffee? Ask when you're paying. Are you buying groceries? Ask when your basket is full. It's really hard for a manager to deny a current customer a donation for a charitable and local cause. This really works. In-person requests, you should always have a procurement letter available. Carry them everywhere, in your purse, in your backpack, in your bag, in the glove compartment, stash them anywhere. That way you always have one available to ask any stakeholder, any day, any time, and anybody you have in contact with. So here's a true story of how the, uh, an example of asking everybody and being friendly. Um, a very friendly family never really participated in any of, this is a Octria team had told me, um, the friendly family that had never participated in any of their past fundraisers. And they had a lot of diversity. They had walkathons and food sales and coupon books, nothing. Then when the auction came along, they happened to ask them, do you think you can help us with donations? And bingo, the spouse works for a very generous company that manufactures small appliances and they have donated year after year. And I could go on and on because it's year after year, I think for like six years they've been donating. So you never know who will say yes at that moment. Ask all your prior donors for auction donations and start asking for donations in advance. Leave plenty of time to request so that the closing date has some, so that you have some lead time on your closing date. And always follow up promptly after asking. So there are plenty of opportunities for finding online donations. And I've done a lot of work. Octree has done a lot of work, a lot of the homework for you. Um, you could spend hours doing Google searches for online donations on your own. Um, but I've saved you a lot of hassle using the Octria Pinterest and I have Octria Pinterest boards. There's over 500 pins that link directly to donation request pages for businesses that do accept online donation requests. But I do suggest that you be prepared before you hop online. Almost always they're going to want a copy of your procurement letter. So have that available probably in a PDF. Many online requests require additional information for verification, such as an ID number, or if you're a school, a school number. Online requests also tend to have a longer lead time. So start hopping on those probably about six months in advance. In addition, some may impose a time limit or a capacity limit. So let me give you an example. American Girl Doll Manufacturer, they're very, very generous donors. But if you visit their website in like the last quarter of the year or pretty much, yeah, pretty much the last quarter of the year, you'll see a notice that says they've met their donation capacity for that calendar year and it opens up again come January. So in that case, you want to plan early in the calendar year. So go ahead and follow Octria's Pinterest boards for links to the donation request pages. We did all the research and all the work for you. Here's a couple examples of what you'll see. On the mega auction donation board, you'll see retail services, zoos and aquariums, theme parks, water parks, movie theaters, art and culture, museums, restaurants, groceries. Um, I've done pretty much all of North America. I've done the United States as well as a bunch for the Canadians also. Online donation requests that are sports related are quite um, 
uh, easy to access also. On the Mega Sports Auction Donation, you'll find links to all the professional teams that donate. That is every NFL team, basketball team, hockey league, major league baseball. They all donate. Most collegiate and minor teams also, minor league teams donate as well. And there's links to their direct donation pages. Many locally loved sports establishments donate. Why are you thinking about sports? Think about your local tennis centers, golf courses, batting cages. Frequently, your local kids' recreational leagues will donate a seasonal registration. So ask them too. If you haven't gotten the theme here, ask everybody. If you have a sports lover in your audience, you definitely need to visit that board. Keepsakes and Priceless can really boost the auction item, and it's not just for schools and students. Um, there's a wide variety of stuff on there, but um, keepsakes are an emotional attachment, and it's, it is a good match for schools and groups. One-of-a-kind items, though, are also really good. Crafted goods, photo goods, rarity is important in auction items because that pushes the bids higher and higher. Priceless things don't necessarily have to be school related, something that's unique to the group or unique to your auction. VIP anything sells, whether it's a VIP table or event seating or parking or access, early or late arrival, depending on the situation, that sells also. If you want to do some pre-bidding on those, those tend to go up really quickly. Food at the event, such as desserts, if you have special desserts you want people to bid on ahead of time, those sell. Local specialty offerings that are unique sell. Access to special people or events. A lot of times, not-for-profits will have access to um, thought leaders in the town or in the region, whether it be a teacher or a mayor or a news outlet, radio, um, personalities, fire and police will likely donate visits to the stations or meet and greets for the offices and the chiefs. So ask them. These are special opportunities that won't necessarily be available to the general public, but you can make available for your auction. And these are completely priceless. You can't put a dollar figure on them. So those bids will continue to go up also. I've seen Octria groups auction off bachelor dates, puppy or animal naming rights, naming rights for a set period of time. And if you're school related, think no homework passes, no uniform passes, get creative. Think of something that will provide value that um, is kind of an intangible. So here's an example of some auction um, items that were keepsakes for, this was for a school. They used them to promote the auction to encourage participation. You can print, print display pages. You can send in emails that are targeted to the exact audience or that class and really pump up the um, enthusiasm for these uh, items. And these in particular, as you can see, it was just an Adirondacks chair with some fingerprints on it. And one of them is a little beach bundle. Both of them went for over $350. So priceless auction items are one of a kind, and they can be long-term or short-term. A long-term priceless item would be access to a VIP parking spot for a year. Short-term would be a VIP seat at a single event. Create value out of something that is not ordinarily available in the retail market. And because they're one of a kind, it drives the bids up. I've seen reserved parking go anywhere from 500 to thousands. Reserved graduation seats for an elementary school even goes in the 500s. Um, high school, $1,000 plus. Um, for the day of items work really well for schools. Think principal of the day, line leader of the day, PE helper for the day. Um, special event seating for um, any sort of charity, whether it be an ice cream night or a holiday festival or a carnival that you put on. Like I said, front row parking, front row seating, easy in, easy out. Think of what you promote or what kind of activities you participate in and how you can maximize that. Let's take a quick tour through our Pinterest boards and I'll just 
pull up a little video to show you what you'll see when you mess around on those. So I also have this up on YouTube, um, but here's an example. So you can go to Google and put in Octria Pinterest and it'll pop. And then you can see the boards that we have, the um, sports and the mega donation boards and golf tournaments and raffles and things along those lines. There's a huge variety of auction items that you can see there. Like I said, there's um, theater and entertainment and all sorts of um, family oriented stuff. If you want to go off our website, scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see our social media tags, Facebook, Twitter, and then you'll see Pinterest there. If you click on the Pinterest button, it'll bring you to the same place. So those are the two easiest ways to find our Pinterest boards. Let me flip back to the presentation. Um, so another way, if you're using Octria to solicit donations, is you can put an auction donation um, content on your Octria website. Um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from fundraising groups that adding this feature gives them a lot of access to donations. So what happens here is you just put a component up there where you can accept donations online and donors can donate directly. They enter the item, the image, and their donor information, assuming your auction website is already up there. Um, you go ahead and you add it. And then on the other end, on the admin side, the solicited auction donations after the donor puts them in, this is what you'll see from the admin side. You'll receive an email that a donation was submitted. And then you go ahead and you review it and then you can either accept or decline it and then make any edits that you need. Nothing is accepted until you review it and you approve it. So that's another way to solicit for auction donations. Here's another one, donationmatch.com. Um, these are our friends out on the West Coast also. Donation Match is a one-stop website with access to donated products from companies for silent auctions, raffles, or giveaways. And companies like to use Donation Match because it automates their donation process. And this benefits you, the auction procurement team, because you can make one request and reach many donors. The pros to Donation Match is it's free to use and you can secure up to five items using just one application. Typically, it's an instant delivery of a printable gift certificate. Every once in a while, they will be limited in some geographical locations. So go ahead and pop on there and see if you can find some matches. I wanna talk about no risk auction items, then I'll turn it over to Sierra to give some more details. But no risk auction items are really the cool auction items that bring the wow factor to the event. These are items that are typically taken on consignment. This means there's a minimum bid price that's due to the consignment vendor if the item sells. Any bids above the minimum bid are proceeds that go to the fundraising group. So you simply choose the items, then add them to the auction catalog and pay for only what sells. No risk auction items really help a lot with the glitz and the glamour of the auction catalog. And it helps you with marketing and getting traction on social media and sometimes even the local news. No risk auction items are fun. People are talking about them and they want to share it with their friends. So here's a short list of the, the gener general um, consignment pieces. There's sports memorabilia, pop culture collectibles, vacation and luxury packages. And here's a few tips before deciding on those risk auction items. You want to choose something that's unique and not available in the open market for sale. You should never be pressured into taking auction items that you don't think will be appropriate for your group. You should never be asked to make a deposit or a guarantee. Um, there is a minimum bid, and that's the commission that will be paid back to the no-risk company. So you want to make sure that you choose something that's within the bounds of your audience. 
Um, and get all the small details in writing, if there's shipping or airfare or blackout dates or exact dates, and find out the details on the delivery of these services. You also wanna make sure on memorabilia that there's guaranteed authenticity. When using a no risk item, use a company that's low pressure. Nobody should pressure you into taking items. Two of our favorites are um, DSC Consulting and Winspire. You should never feel pressured to take anything that will not appeal to your audience. So here's just a quick example of DSC Consulting. They do sports memorabilia and pop culture collectibles. And they're really just a nice group of people over there. Um, they'll ask you a lot of questions about your group and what they like and what they don't like and really find some things that would help match your audience, attract bidders and market the event. Remember, the more bidders you have, the higher the bids and the more funds raised. So the more eyes you have on your auction, the better off you are. So at this point in time, I'll let Sierra talk about all the awesome vacation and experience um, items for unique travel. Great. Thank you. Um, so yeah, at Winspire, we provide um, travel packages and hotel stays for nonprofits use in their events. Uh, so we've specifically uh, found the niche within travel and different bucket list type items uh, and experiences. As Lori mentioned, these are all no risk auction items. So each package does have a nonprofit cost associated, but that only comes into play if we're fulfilling a trip. If you don't have any bids, um, then there's no cost associated. And um, I think it's beneficial when looking at your auction items to help fill any gaps um, within your, your items. So. Folks will use our packages in their live auction, as Lori mentioned, for some of those wow factor items, um, but they can help fill a table for silent or online auctions as well, providing a great variety. Uh, so we have things all around the world, um, Tennessee Whiskey Adventure, um, Tuscany Culinary Escapes, Meet and Greet with Hamilton Cast, a lot of fun things that can definitely help um, up your auction items. So with that, I wanted to provide a few um, examples and fill you in a little bit more about our process uh, so you have a better understanding. But of course, as questions come, uh, feel free to um, add them in the chat and we can get to them a little later in the presentation. So a lot of times folks ask me how it works, how are you able to make money on a package like these? Uh, so I wanted to help provide a little bit more insight there. So I went ahead and used for an example our Ireland adventure. So this package includes six nights in Ireland, um, all around the country, a couple castle tours, Cliffs of Moor tour, um, Guinness storehouse. So um, that nonprofit cost is $35.50. So that's basically what we would need in order to fulfill the trip. Uh, we do recommend a 15 to 20% markup to start your bidding, uh, which would bring your starting bid amount to 4260. Now let's say you are able to get a few bids and uh, end up selling it for $5,000. Uh, that means that we would uh, look for our 3550 and the nonprofit would make a remaining 1450. Now, one of the benefits about uh, Windspire's no risk auction items is that we, um, you are able to sell them multiple times. So in this case, maybe there are a few folks that were looking to go to Ireland and you were able to sell it twice at that winning bid amount. Um, that actually would bring your total up to nearly $3,000 uh, raised from um, this one item in your auction. So um, like I said, if, if you have questions there as far as what that looks, feel free to uh, add them to the chat. And as far as our Winspire process, um, what would happen is you would work with me or one of our fundraising specialists uh, to help consult as far as what auction items you already have donated, what items you're looking for, and really help find those items that are gonna be a good fit for your audience. Once we decide, we would go ahead and reserve those packages for you to be able to offer at your event. Uh, we provide you with all of the display materials. So I have those listed um, there, which include high resolution photos, full package descriptions, a winning bidder letter, and a silent auction display, uh, which is a PDF. Then the event happens. 
uh, we, we would touch base there a day or two after the event to see how the packages did and if any sold. Uh, we would go ahead and collect the winning bidder's contact information from you. And then our donor experience team would reach out to your winner to confirm and start the booking process. Um, so we take um, uh, full uh, control over that winning bidder experience and make sure that they uh, you know, have a point of contact booking all of their arrangements for them. So hopefully that helps answer any questions you might have had as far as no risk auction items and um, uh, I think Lori's done a great job of providing all types of auction items um, and different ideas that would be a benefit to your event. And hopefully Winspire would be able to um, help as well. So um, thanks, Lori. I think you had um, a couple other ideas as well. Yeah, the, it continues. I love the idea that once the auction item is sold, the team doesn't have to do anything and it gets turned over to your team and they do all the work coordinating with the um, with the the auction winner. So that, that that's my favorite part. We're, auction is over. We're done. Here, you take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks, Lori. Because <laughs> burnout is real. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Um, so here's a couple articles that have popped up in the news, and I've just kind of collect these to share on these on these webinars. Oops, did I not? Did I not? Oops, sorry. Um, Trash to Treasure. This gentleman here, he works for the city department, and there were 113 street signs that were destined for the trap heat trash heap and they auctioned them off. The organizer was flabbergasted by the level of interest and the sign that he's holding there, the single sign sold for 590 bucks. Um, Christmas tree auctions do really well. You have your local um, famous people or, or artists around your area decorate the full-size Christmas trees or table-size Christmas trees, bid those off for a truly magical evening. Think about what's in your backyard, what may be of value, and go ahead and provide that at auction to increase participation, get people to talk about it, and put lots of photos up on your auction catalog so that um, it appeals to a wide variety of people. So I talked about all the do's. I want to talk about the do not. So here are a couple of things that you don't want to do and some advice of what not to do when asking for auction donations. Don't be too pushy. Like I said, be nice and friendly. Don't email when it says hand deliver or vice versa. Know the guidelines for submittal. Not following the guidelines will only lead to frustration and wasted times. Don't be wishy-washy about picking up auction item donations. I'm telling you from experience, pick those items up as soon as possible. Donations left behind definitely get lost. Don't be scattered or have items in multiple locations with multiple people. Keep track of everything. And I said go ahead and ask when you're at lunch or dinner, but don't ask at the super busy times during the lunch rush or the dinner rush. Catch them right before, or right after, um, and you're certain to get a, a, a response. Many times I've asked um, while we're eating or you know towards the end of a rush, and by later in the um, meal, the manager will come over and hand us uh, donation um, items right then and there. So like I said, while you're spending money, they're much apt to give you a donation. Don't wait too long to create a digital presence online. This gives you additional credibility and it helps promote the donors prior to the prior and during the event. Donors love to see other donors up there and realize that they're going to get promotion just like the others. Um, and I find that um, kind of like when you're trying to sleep train your kids, sleep begets sleep. Well, auction items beget auction items. So go ahead and promote early. Don't wait too long to distribute thank you letters either. Plan in your planning period to distribute thank you letters. Pre-print them or have them ready to go after the event. Coming off the high of event is not the time that you want to worry. 
And don't waste time with promotional offers. It's okay to say no thank you to two for one coupons or trial offers or buy something to get something. Don't clutter the auction with junk. So wrap up and next steps. Procurement can be enhanced with early promotion. Oops, sorry. With early promotion, it's a lot easier to get a yes when you can refer a potential donor to an online presence and it legitimizes the auction fundraiser and gives the donor a place to gather more information. And like I said, where the auction can live online. Pre-fill out a few items so that the donors can see what their business name and logo would look like when presented on your auction website. Track everything, track every donor, every item, have your website set up and branded, establish a hallmark that is recognized, use a logo and a tagline that's consistent across all communications regarding your auction fundraiser, whether that be letters, newsletters, website, handouts, banners, any general communication, and then you can build on it from year to year. You want to establish a media, a social media presence early, and you want to do it where your stakeholders hang out socially online. Are they on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram? Spend the time on the platforms where they are and don't waste time where they are not. Use lots of photos, lots of videos, sneak peeks of the venue, snapshots of the food that'll be on the menu, photos of your auction items, anything that can visually show your auction story. And of course, the next steps are pricing the auction items and promoting them. There's a whole separate section on pricing auction items on one of our other webinars, um, as well as on our website. Um, and there's some best practices. So check those out or drop me an email if you need some help locating them. So here is a uh, quickie view of the resource links that were referred to throughout this presentation. You don't need to jot them down. At the end of the webinar, the slide deck will close and it'll drop you onto a website page that'll have those. In addition, I'll be sending out a follow-up email after the webinar with a um, playback and the resource links as well. So stay in touch with us. Octria is very active on Facebook and Twitter. We post almost daily, if not a couple times. Like I said, on Pinterest, there's a lot of stuff. You can always email us, hello at octria.com. I always recommend to mess around with Octria's demo, whether you're trying to figure out whether to use Octria or if you're in the middle of an auction, it's a great place to sandbox and try out some of the features um, without messing around with your own data. And then of course, Winspire, the packages that we talked about, there's the link and you can always email Sierra as well and her email will be on the, e the outbound email and she'd be happy to help you. Um, is there anything else you want to add, Sierra? Um, and I want to invite everybody to drop any comments or questions in the chat box as you um, provide your comments also. Yeah, I think this has been a really informative webinar, hopefully. Um, I know I got a couple new ideas to take back as well within um, fundraising, and I'd love to chat with anybody further. So if there are questions, um, you know, feel free, as you mentioned, to uh, drop them in the chat. But my email um, is always open as well. Awesome.